zucchini, yellow squash, spaghetti squash, acorn squash. All of these are quintessential spring and summer vegetables. And some of you grow these prolifically while others struggle with the pests and the disease. So I wanna talk about five mistakes that you're probably making that are preventing you from growing an abundance of all of these. What's going on everyone? It's Phil from Earth Nails and Tails. What's our goal to grow the gardener in you? And today we're gonna to be covering five mistakes that you're probably making in order to grow beautiful zucchini or squash plants like this. And this plant right here is absolutely gorgeous. And there's some things that I'm applying in my garden in order to achieve these results. So if you want to learn some tips and tricks about growing amazing squash, make sure you stick around for more. Some of the most common questions I'm getting asked is, how did you grow a zucchini plant that big? Mine are all dying. The squash vine borers, the squash bugs, all of these pests are just wreaking havoc on our garden. And that's why I wanted to create this video in order to show you all the things that I'm applying in order to have results like this. And preventing those pests is probably the number one thing to grow a beautiful plant. And the very first tip to prevent this is don't grow all of your squash in the same place. I've got my squash and zucchini spread out all over the property. And this helps prevent all of those bugs coming in and just completely destroying all of your crop that's based in one area. If you have one zucchini here, one squash over there, one melon, one gourd, whatever it is, anything in the squash family, it's gonna prevent from all of the bugs coming into that one area and just wreaking havoc on your garden. Number two is companion planting. And I don't think that it's any coincidence that our giant zucchini plant is located right next to this beautiful pollinator garden that we have right here. And it has a variety of different plants. We have echinacea, we have butterfly bush, we have Black Eyed Susan, but there are tons of beneficial plants that you can plant near and around your zucchini in order to ward off the bad bugs and bring in the good bugs. Cosmos, marigolds, nasturtium, borage, dill. There are so many companion plants that you can plant with or alongside your squash and zucchini in order to make your harvest more prolific. Many of the companion plants have different attributes that make them beneficial to your plants. Some take those bad bugs and keep them away, while others take the good bugs and pull them in. So you do have to know which one does which. So I'm not going to go over every single one, but I'll go over some that I think are extremely helpful. Dill, a culinary herb. If you place it alongside your squash or zucchini, it's going to help attract in those beneficial pollinators as well as those bigger bugs that are going to eat those bad bugs. So not only are you going to get a delicious culinary herb, but it's going to help your plants grow bigger and better. Marigolds, they're beautiful and people know that they're a great companion plant all over the garden for various crops. And just like they're beneficial for those other crops, they're gonna be beneficial for your squash and zucchini. So make sure you're planting those as well. Borage is a big, beautiful purple flower that self seeds and will come back every single year if you let it. And sometimes it can actually be invasive, but it's such a beautiful plant. And again, this is one of those crops that will attract in those large predators, which will feed off of all those nagging insects. And lastly, nasturtium makes a great trap crop. So it's actually good to plant that a little bit away from your squash or zucchini, and it will attract aphids to keep them off of your plants. And it's strong enough where it will continue to grow so you can use it in your salads or other dishes as well. The third mistake you're probably making is that you're not succession planting. And what do I mean by that? Don't plant all of your plants at the same time. Because if you plant all of your plants at the same time, there's a large chance that all those bugs are just gonna come in and wreak havoc on your squashes and then you're gonna have absolutely none. Turns out for whatever area you live in, there's always going to be a peak when those bad bugs come in and that's usually at the beginning or the middle of the season. By succession planting them or planting them at various times throughout the year, you're gonna miss that peak of where those bugs come and attack your garden. 
they're gonna go away and then your vegetables are gonna start to thrive. So you wanna make sure that you're utilizing succession planting in order to prevent this from happening. So you can see, I've got this little guy right here who I planted a few weeks ago compared to the other zucchini and squash that I planted at the beginning of spring after my last frost. So since it could take anywhere from two to four weeks for your squash to pop out of the ground, flower and start producing, as soon as you think that your zucchini is established or as soon as you see the first flowers come on, plant some more seeds. So that way you will have another plant that's growing as this one is maturing and providing you fruit and if worse comes to worse, you have two producing zucchini or squash plants and you can provide some extra fruit to your friends or family. The fourth mistake that you're probably making is that you're letting your zucchini or squash get too big. And no, I don't mean the plants, I mean the fruit themselves. The whole purpose of any vegetable, any plant is to mature and reproduce so that way the next generation can go on and flourish. So when you let your zucchini get too large or mature, that plant is gonna stop producing any fruit and then your season is essentially over. So what you want to do is pick your zucchini and squash while they are small. They're gonna be much sweeter, the seeds aren't gonna be as large, and you're going to get a much larger crop off of each individual plant. And the fifth and final mistake that you're probably making is trellising your squash or zucchini and this isn't applicable to all types. We have our winter squashes, which are gonna be more of a vining type variety, and I would highly recommend trellising those. But I've seen a lot of people trellis their zucchini and yellow squashes, and I would say that's a big no-no. The reason why you don't want to trellis them is because those vines are gonna travel along the ground and they're gonna have the ability to re-root themselves. And this is especially helpful when the dreaded squash vine borer comes along because what that insect does comes and lands on the base of your plant or on the stem of your plant. And then once those larvae hatch that has placed on the outside of the stem, it'll dig into it and then eat the plant literally from the inside out. If you let the plant travel along the ground, you're providing that plant the ability to re-root itself upstream of where that squash vine bore dug into the plant. And if it can re-root, it can continue to grow and produce fruit. So this is the reason why I would recommend that you do not trellis your zucchini and yellow squashes. All right, everyone. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. And I hope you had fun and learned something along the way. I guarantee that if you apply these five mistakes to your garden, you're gonna have bigger and better squash harvests like you've never had before. And if you like the merchandise, make sure you go check it out. And I'll put a link in the description so you can see all of our merchandise and all of the products that we use. There's lots of things that we use around the garden which I find highly beneficial. And all of that you can find on our website. And lastly, if you did learn something from this video, make sure you like and subscribe because we're always looking to put out more great gardening content so that way we can help grow the gardener in you. Again, my name is Phil from Earth Nails and Tails, and I'll see you next time.